Good morning, everyone. This morning, we're going to be going over some U.S. history, some presidential. It's President's Day to really celebrate. It was actually founded off of George Washington's birthday and later embedded with Abraham Lincoln's birthday, which is on the 12th. So cheers to the presidents, cheers to and some U.S. history. It's going to be a fun one. I'm going to pick my top five, my personal ones, and a couple honorable mentions off of uh, White House talk up. So cheers, friends. Presidential history. It's going to be a fun one. Good morning, good morning, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Talk Terror Morning Show, where we go over tips, tricks, ideas, and exercises to help make you the absolute best person you can be, not only for yourself, but for the people you love and care about most. Good morning, good morning, everyone. Um, let me situate some stuff on my screen, but today we're going to be going over presidential history. So today's President's Day, and I'd mentioned in the introduction just for a brief second that... This was based off of the, the close birthdays of George Washington, and then additionally added on later, Abraham Lincoln. They're both, um, so they do it the third Monday of February. So a little history on that. But really, I think the holiday symbolizes the position in general and different presidents. I personally really enjoy a lot of U.S. history, although it's, if you look across compared to everywhere else in the world. It's actually really brief. It's pretty crazy what we've been able to accomplish so fast in so little time. So I'm going to go over my top five presidents. Maybe it inspires you to go pick up a history book on somebody else that you like, or maybe you study a different country or a different official. But these people leave clues. It, the, whether a lot of times I hear back that people have issues with the morals and values of the time, such as, yes, uh, George Washington did have slaves, a Virginian at that time. It was really common to do so. So there's the right and wrongs of it that's up for your interpretation. I think there's still principles that we can take from a lot of these people and these officials in these turbulent times. You know, they're running plumbing and toilets and like disease and the plague and fighting uh, foreign countries and people just busting your house and taking your stuff. It was, it, history is really dark and scary. And that's a huge reason why I'm so grateful for all the efforts and all of the lives that have been contributed to live um, in the greatest nation that we've ever seen today. So, all right, let's get right into it. I'm going to go put my top five on the board. And then a couple honorable mentions, just so you guys know my list. And then I'm going to go through and I'm going to read some of these profiles that I found online that I like that are short and sweet, just so you guys can get a better lit just of my own list. How's everyone doing this morning? Maybe we wanted to learn a little bit about history this morning. So we're tuning in, you grab your coffee, or maybe you're just getting rock and rolling for the day, getting out of bed. So we're going to, this is the U.S. president list. President. All right. This is my top five. So number one on our list, we have Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln. I think we can all agree that most notable for the Civil War and handling that situation, a literal war on our own people, on our own country, and also the abolition, like the just abolishing slavery was pretty sweet, I would say. I think we can all agree on that. And his view and his vision and his strength, overcoming things like depression, but we'll get more into Lincoln in a moment. But he coming in at number one comes Abraham Lincoln. The next one is Theodore Roosevelt. So we can just do Teddy. Teddy Roosevelt. Mark and Ted, they would call him everything from chief of police to governor to president. And he had huge influences, very military, like great strategic mind with resources, very, very sharp, very, very passionate, really helping clean up things, even like just a lot of the treachery and 
the police and working with Ma and stuff, New York was all jacked up. So really big fan of Teddy Roosevelt. Also a huge sweet, a soft spot with me with Ted is, and we'll read through his bio, is his influence on national park preservation. And I'm a huge national park freak. So you can check out, he actually has a park up in the Dakotas and lots of land dedicated to him up there. And that's, he actually had a hiatus up there where he was rebuilding his health and trying to figure out his life and riding horses for days up there. Pretty, pretty cool guy. Next guy I would say is FDR. FDR is on my list. Yes, he is also the fifth cousin. Uh, so Teddy, FDR is the fifth cousin of Teddy. FDR, huge fan. The dude had polio in going through that treachery, helping these major influences uh, when people didn't weren't helping these types of people. He created resorts. He created communities. He created a sense of ownership. And additionally, while still continuing to push through and create the New Deal, um, just kind of pull our what I believe to be like the biggest recession in this country's history. And just being able to get banks back up, get people back, get jobs and home ownership rolling again. FDR, economically, I would say, had probably the biggest impact on our country. Really got things rock and rolling again for us. Okay, on to the next one. Number four is Lyndon B. Johnson for me. And this is a my big thing with him is the Civil Rights Act of... 1964, incredible with Civil Rights Act. Yes, he gets a lot of backlash on how he handled the Vietnam thing. That's up for your own interpretation. Yes, oh, well, okay. I personally think he screwed he screwed a lot of things up, but we all screw things up. But he did get civil rights within our own country, and I think reinvesting into our country of FDR and Lyndon B. Johnson, I think we're both really good at that, at really investing into our country and really investing in and helping people who are poor have more opportunities. Absolute great thing. So Lyndon B. Johnson comes in at number four for me. Um, his impacts on civil rights specifically were really, really good. Um, so he comes in at number four. And number five comes in for me is Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan. Dealing with the Cold War, dealing with... Um, the, probably most notably known for Reaganomics. If you've ever heard of Reaganomics, you can read more about it. But essentially, this quick little passage I have over here. I'm just doing my research. Uh, I had to do a bunch of research for this just to make sure I don't sound like an idiot. Uh, Reagan implemented a set of economic policies known as Reaganomics or supply-side economics, tax cuts, reduced government regulation, which I'm personally always a fan of, and free market principles. These are things that I believe create the most innovation and most prosperity for any country. So he stood behind a lot of economic policies that I, I personally liked. He had one of the biggest tax reforms thing, and then also dealing with the Cold War and all this kind of crazy stuff and kind of these influences on like nuclear power and you know russia's a big powerful country so ronald reagan comes in at number five and additionally he grew up about 10 minutes from where i grew up i was just in his hometown of dixon yesterday and we'll talk a bit about that too okay this was my top five list for u.s presidents abraham lincoln at number one teddy roosevelt fdr lyndon johnson and ronald reagan and i had a couple honorable mentions might as well have a couple honorable mentions on here and for me this was george washington good old george if i could spell george this morning geez tanner george and also jfk jfk and george washington made my honorable mention list the the whole turning over into a brand new government and being the first to roll and to ride. I, I think if anyone reads about George Washington, you can never question his diplomacy, his leadership, and just his courage on moving things forward and really giving us even a chance. Yes, he had some things going on in history and you can always pick that apart. But overall, man, just even a few different, day, different days of weather 
we might not even be the country that we are today. Or JFK, only a thousand days into his um, presidential go, he unfortunately was. He got popped in Dallas. Um, who killed him is who really was behind him killing him is a huge conspiracy. If you ever want to dive into that, um, there's a lot of uh, questions on who killed him, but we won't really be diving into that today. I liked JFK as another honorable mention because he was my favorite thing about JFK was that he, he continuously would talk about, we need to put ourselves in the position of our adversaries. We need to view this situation, how our enemy would view it. We need to, or even just people part of the human family, right? I'm not big on this word enemies, right? We all just want different resources and, and goals regardless, but just viewing it, what does really what Russia want? Um, the Cuban Missile Crisis, I think um, in a lot of ways, he was able to, in a time where a lot of our leaders of the past wouldn't really be willing to like listen and learn and interact and communicate. And I think we're struggling with that right now too, as, as well as a nation is our willingness to communicate with other countries is dwindled. And then we have other big superpowers like Russia and China making deals on currency and trade and stuff like that. And that's the last thing I believe that we really want. Um, but either way, not to dive too much into that, JFK really big on loved his initial policies and writings. Um, phenomenal writer. I think he has this book called Profiles and Courage, if you want to read it that he wrote. That was a Pulitzer Prize winner as well. But JFK, really cool. And George Washington also made the list. All right, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Go over here, presidents. You can go over to this link. I'm going to drop this in the comments section right now. If you want to look up, if you like any of these other presidents, you can just read a short little bio on them. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, so you can check out that link if you want to read more. This is just from whitehouse.gov, but I'm going to change up my screen a little bit so you guys can see it a little bit better. All right, we're going to read through some of these profiles today. Abraham Lincoln, my man, my man. All right, we're going to start with you, Abe. Honest Abe, they called him. What's going on with Abraham Lincoln? Need to take a drink of water. We might be here for a bit, folks. Getting some history this morning, learning some cool stuff. Abraham Lincoln became the United States 16th president in 1861, issuing the Emancipation Proclamation that declared forever free those slaves within the Confederacy in 1863. Lincoln warned the South in his inaugural address, in your hands, my dissatisfied fellow countrymen, and not in mine, is the momentous issue of civil war. The government will not assail you. You have a no oath registered in heaven to destroy the government, while I shall have the most solemn one to preserve, protect, and defend it. Lincoln thought succession illegal, and was willing to use force to defend federal law and the Union. When Confederate batteries fired on Fort Sumner and forced its surrender, he called on the states for 75,000 volunteers. Four more slave states joined the Confederacy, but four remained within the Union. The Civil War had begun. The son of a Kentucky frontiersman, Lincoln had to struggle for a living and for learning, five months before receiving his party's nomination for president, he sketched his life. I was born February 12th, just a couple days ago, shout out to his birthday very recently, 1809 in Hardin County, Kentucky. And my parents were both born in Virginia of undistinguished families, second families, perhaps I should say. My mother who died in my 10th year was of a family of the name of Hanks. My father removed from Kentucky to Indiana in my eighth year. It was a wild region with many bears and other wild animals still in the woods. There I grew up. Of course, when I came of age, I did not know much. Still, somehow, I could read, write, cipher. But that was all. Lincoln made extraordinary efforts to attain knowledge while working on a farm. 
splitting rails for fences and keeping store at New Salem, Illinois. He was a captain in the Black Hawk War, spent eight years in Illinois legislature, and rode the circuit of courts for many years. His law partner said of him, his ambition was a little engine that knew no rest. He married Mary Todd, and they had four boys, only one of whom lived to maturity. That was definitely one of the biggest influences on Lincoln's uh, depression, aside from people dying in the Civil War was um, his children dying. In 58, Lincoln ran against Stephen A. Douglas for senator. He lost the election, but in debating with Douglas, he gained a national reputation that won him the Republican nomination for president in 1860. Yeah, those speeches were pretty fire back with Doug Douglas back in the day. Uh, as president, he built the Republican Party into a strong national organization. Further, he rallied most of the Northern Democrats to the Union cause. On January 1st, 63, he issued the Emancipation Proclamation that declared forever free those state, those slave states within the Confederacy. Lincoln never let the world forget that the Civil War involved an even larger issue. This, he stated most movingly in dedicating the military cemetery at Gettysburg, that we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom and that government of the people by the people for the people shall not perish from the earth. Lincoln won re-election in 64 as Union military triumphs herald an end to the war. In his planning for peace, pres the president was flexible and generous, encouraging Southerners to lay down their arms and join speedily in reunion. Well, yeah. Absolutely love that. The spirit that guided him was clearly that of his second inaugural, inaugural address, now inscribed on one wall of the Lincoln Memorial in Washington, D.C. I still have not been to D.C. I really want to go. With malice toward none, with clarity, charity for all, with firmness in the right, as God gives us to see the right, let us strive on to finish the work we are in to bind up the nation's wounds. On Good Friday, April 14th, 65, Lincoln was assassinated at Ford's Theater in Washington by John Wilkes Booth, an actor who somehow thought he was helping the South. The opposite was the result for, with Lincoln's death, the possibility of peace with magnanimity died. Okay, Lincoln, great. 16th president came in for, coming first on our list. Next, we have Theodore Roosevelt, Big Ted. Bark and Ted, my man. All right. How's everyone doing this morning? I'm going to go way over on time this morning. I just, I love history, so I'll be reading them. You can check these out. You can come back. You can hear them for each president. So this one we're going to be talking about President Theodore Roosevelt. With the assassination of President William McKinley, Theodore Roosevelt, not quite 43, became the 26th and youngest president in the nation's history, serving from 01 to 09. He brought new excitement and power to the office, vigorously leading Congress and the American public toward progressive reforms and a strong foreign policy. With the assassination of President McKinley, Theodore Roosevelt, not quite 43, became the youngest president in the nation's history. He brought new excitement and power to the presidency as he vigorously led Congress and the American people toward progressive reforms and a strong foreign policy. That was literally the same paragraph. I didn't mean to read that, but <clears throat> rocking and rolling. He took the view that the president, as a steward of the people, should take whatever action necessary for the public good unless expressly forbidden by the law or the Constitution. I did not usurp power, he wrote, but I did greatly broaden the use of executive power. Roosevelt's youth differed sharply from that of the log cabin presidents. He was born in New York City in 58 into a wealthy family, but he too struggled against ill health and in his triumph because became an advocate of the strenuous life. In 84, his first wife, Alice Roosevelt, and his mother died on the same day. That is horrible, dude. Could you imagine? His mother and... His uh, wife and mother died on the same day. Roosevelt spent much of the next two years on his ranch in the Badlands, 
of Dakota Territory. There he mastered his sorrow as he lived in the saddle, driving cattle, hunting big game. He even captured an outlaw. On a visit to London, he married Edith Caro in December 1886. During the Spanish-American War, Roosevelt was lieutenant colonel of the Rough Rider Regiment, which he led on a charge at the Battle of San Juan. He was one of the most conspicuous heroes of the war. Tom Platt, needing a hero to draw attention away from scandals in New York State, accepted Roosevelt as the Republican candidate for governor in 1898. Roosevelt won and served with distinction. As president, Roosevelt held the ideal that the government should be the great arbiter of the conflicting economic forces in the nation, especially between capital and labor, guaranteeing justice to each and dispensing favors to none. Roosevelt emerged spectacularly as a trust buster by forcing the disillusion of a great railroad combination in the Northwest. Another antitrust other antitrust suits under the Sherman Act followed. So breaking up some of the monopolies in the country, great. Roosevelt steered, Roosevelt steered the United States more actively into world politics. He liked to quote a favorite proverb, speak softly and carry a big stick. Aware of the strategic need for a shortcut between the Atlantic and Pacific, Roosevelt ensured the construction of the Panama Canal is to the Monroe Doctrine prevented the establishment of foreign bases in the Caribbean and aggregated the sole right of intervention in Latin America to the United States. He won the new Nobel Peace Prize for mediating the Russo-Japanese War, reached a gentleman's agreement on immigration with Japan, and sent the Great White Fleet on a goodwill tour of the world. Some of Theodore Roosevelt's most effective account achievements were in conservation. He added enormously to the national forests in the West, reserved lands for public use, and for forested great irrigation projects. He crusaded endlessly on big matters, on matters big and small, exciting audiences with his high-pitched voice, jutting jaw, and pounding fist, also called Barking Ted, the life of strenuous endeavor was a must for those around him as he romped with his five younger children and led ambassadors on hikes through Rock Creek Park in Washington, D.C. Leaving the presidency in 09, Roosevelt went on an African safari, then jumped back into politics. In 1912, he ran for president on a progressive ticket. To reporters, he once remarked that he felt as fit as a bull moose, the name of his new party. While campaigning in Milwaukee, he was shot in the chest by a frantic. Roosevelt soon recovered, but his words at the time would have been applicable at the time of his death in 1919. No man has had a happier life than I have led, a happier life in every way. Really cool, dude. Just a, like the big... What maybe is his policies weren't as massive, but I did because I usually like free market policies, but there's, gosh, it's so hard. I go back and forth with myself all the time because we don't want these giant monopolies like some of the, the railway ones that he was able to help break up and kind of just take like this excuse approach if you donate enough money or this and that. Bark and Ted was on people and uh, he stood by his morals and. That's why he made my lesson. That's why I really liked him. Must learn in the family because our next one is on FDR. FDR. So learning about FDR a little bit this morning. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. I'm going to take a drink of water. Okay. Assuming the presidency at the depth of the Great Depression... FDR helped the American people regain faith in themselves. He brought hope as he promised prompt, vigorous action and asserted in his inaugural address, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Born in 1882 at the Hyde Park, New York, now a National Historic Site, he attended Harvard University and Columbia Law School, 
On St. Patrick's Day, 1905, he married Eleanor Roosevelt. Following, following the example of his fifth cousin, President Theodore Roosevelt, whom he greatly admired, Frank FDR entered public service through politics, but as a Democrat. He won election to the New York Senate in 1910. President Wilson appointed him Assistant Secretary of the Navy, and he was the Democratic nominee for Vice President in 1920. In the summer of 21, when he was 39, disaster hit. He was stricken with polio, demonstrating indomitable courage. He fought to regain the use of his legs, particularly through swimming. Man, folks, it, working out in water is, if you if you got jacked up body, I remember I when I hurt my knee and I had to get surgery and stuff on it, using the water was the way. Anyway, at the 1924 Democratic Convention, he dramatically appeared to crutches to nominate Alfred E. Smith as the happy warrior. In, in 28, Roosevelt became governor of New York. He was elected president in November 1932 to the first of four terms. By March, there were 13 million unemployed. Wow. Yeah, that's a terrible time to come into office. And almost every bank was closed. In his first 100 days, he proposed and Congress enacted a sweeping program to bring recovery to business and agriculture, relief to the unemployed and to those in danger of losing farms and homes and reform, especially through the establishment of the Tennessee Valley Authority. By 1935, the nation had achieved some measure of recovery, but businessmen and bankers were turning more and more against Roosevelt's New Deal program. They feared his experiments were appalled because he had taken the nation off of the gold standard and allowed deficits in the budget and disliked the concessions to labor. Roosevelt responded with a new program of reform, social security, heavier taxes on the wealthy, new controls over banks and public utilities, and an enormous work relief program for the unemployed. In 36, he was reelected by a top-heavy margin, feeling he was armed with a popular mandate. He sought legislation to enlarge the Supreme Court, which had been invalidating key deal measures. Roosevelt lost the Supreme Court battle, but a revolution in con constitutional law took place. Thereafter, the government could legally regulate the economy. Roosevelt had pledged the United States to the good neighbor policy, transforming the Monroe Doctrine from a unilateral American manifesto into arrangements for mutual action against aggressors. He also sought through neutrality legislation to keep the United States out of the war in Europe, yet at the same time to strengthen nations threatened or attacked. When France fell and England came under siege in 1940, he began to send Great Britain all possible aid short of actual military involvement. When the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor on December 7, 1941, Roosevelt directed organization of the nation's manpower and resources for global war. Feeling that the future peace of the world would depend upon relations between the United States and Russia, he devoted much thought to the planning of a United Nations, now called the UN, right, in which he hoped international difficulties could be settled. As the war drew to a close, Roosevelt's health deteriorated, and on April 12, 1945, while at Warm Springs, Georgia, he died of a cerebral hemorrhage. So, yeah, Warm Springs, Georgia is that facility that he built out that him and other people could use when, you know, if you got polio, which was absolutely terrible. But, okay, yeah, FDR, total really, really cool dude. On to the next one, uh, Lyndon B. Johnson. Lyndon B. Johnson, my man. All right, Lyndon B. Johnson. A great society. A great society for the American people and their fellow men elsewhere. Also going, you'd probably hear that from JFK, the great society. For the American people and their fellow men elsewhere was the vision of Lyndon B. Johnson. In his first years of office, he obtained passage of one of the most executive legislative programs in the nation's history. 
maintaining collective security, he carried on the rapidly growing struggle to restrain communist encroachment in Vietnam. Johnson was born on, uh, he gets a lot of flack for Vietnam. You can dive into that a little bit more. Um, you know, we're we being lied to. Yeah, do they lie all the time? Yada, yada, whatever. Johnson was born on August 27th, 1908 in Central Texas, not far from Johnson City, which his family had helped settle. He felt the pinch of rural poverty as he grew up working his way through Southwest Texas State Teachers College, known as Texas State University, San Marcos. He learned compassion for the poverty of others when he taught students of Mexican descent. In This guy was a workaholic, dude. That's why he made my, my top list. He just cared about helping people so much. In 37, he campaigned successfully for the House of Representatives on a New Deal platform, effectively aided by his wife, the former Claudia Lady Bird Taylor, whom he married in 1934. My girlfriend and I actually got to go to Austin, Texas, and we got to go to his presidential museum, and Lady Bird had a bunch of stuff there, and that was pretty cool. Anyway, reading on. During World War II, he served briefly in the Navy as a lieutenant commander, winning a Silver Star in the South Pacific. After six terms in the House, Johnson was elected to the Senate in 48. In 53, he became the youngest minority leader in Senate history. In the following year, when the Democrats won control, majority leader, with rare skill, he obtained passage of a number of key Eisenhower measures. In He got a lot done in, it, um, in his time. In the 60 campaign, Johnson, as JFK's running mate, was elected vice president on November 22nd, 1963. When Kennedy was assassinated, Johnson was sworn in as president. His fir first, he obtained an enactment of the measures President Kennedy had been urging at the time of his death, a new civil rights bill, and a tax cut. Next, he urged the nation to build a great society, a place where the meaning of man's life matches the marvels of man's labor. In 1964, Johnson won the presidency with 61% of the vote and had the widest popular margin in American history, more than 15 million votes. I mean, man, he was started, he started off so good. He was really knocking civil rights stuff out of the park. And then the Vietnam War stuff, uh, I think, really brought down his popularity. Either way, let's keep reading. The Great Society program became Johnson's agenda for Congress in January 65, aid to education, attack on disease, Medicare, urban renewal, beautification, conservation, development of depressed regions, a wide-scale fight against poverty, control and preservation of crime and delinquency, removal of obstacles to the right to vote, Congress at times argumenting or amending rapidly enacted Johnson's recommendations, millions of elderly people found sucker through the 65 Medicare Amendment to the Social Security Act. Big program. Under Johnson, the country made spectacular explorations of space in a program he had championed since its start. When three astronauts successfully orbited the moon in December 68, Johnson congratulated them. You have taken all of us all over the world into a new era. Did we go to the moon? I don't know. Either way. All right. <laughs> Moving on. Nevertheless, two overriding crises have been gaining momentum since 65. Despite the beginning of new anti-poverty and anti-discrimination programs, unrest and rioting in black ghettos troubled the nation. Yeah, we had some, dude, it was not good. Um, President Johnson steadily exerted his influence against segregation and on behalf of law and order, but there was no early solution. The other crisis arose from Vietnam. Despite Johnson's efforts to end the communist aggression and achieve a settlement, fighting continued. Controversy over the war had become acute by the end of March 68 when he limited the, excuse me, when he limited the bombing of North Vietnam in order to initiate negotiations. At the same time, he startled the world by withdrawing as a candidate for re-election so that he might devote his full efforts, unimpeded by politics, to the quest for peace. 
When he left office, peace talks were underway. He did not live to see them successful, but he died suddenly of a heart attack at his Texas ranch on January 22nd, 1973. Yeah, you can't. So nicotine and caffeine turns out it's really not good for your heart. And this man was having four cigarettes and four cups of coffee from the history books I was reading. And he was just a worker, work, work, work until, and that's why I made my top list. Okay. One more folks on to Ronald Reagan. So Lyndon B. Johnson, 36 president of the United States, Ronald Reagan, boy of Dixon right down the road from me. So he makes our list. Let's read a little bit about my man, Reagan. All right, how's everyone doing this morning? Getting a little history in, enjoying maybe a coffee. All right, let's keep rocking and rolling. Okay. Ronald Reagan, originally an American actor and politician, became the 40th president of the United States, serving from 81 to 89. His term saw a restoration of prosperity at home with the goal of achieving peace through strength abroad. At the end of his two terms in office, Ronald Reagan viewed it with satisfaction the achievements of his initiative program known as the Reagan Revolution, which aimed to reinvigorate the American people and reduce their reliance upon government. He felt he had fulfilled his campaign pledge of 80 to restore the great, confident roar of American progress and growth and optimism. On February 6, 1911, Ronald Wilson Reagan was born to Nellie and John Reagan in Tampa Co, Illinois. He attended high school in nearby Dixon and then worked his way through Eureka College. There he studied economics and sociology, played on the football team, and acted in school plays. Upon graduation, he seemed like a real stud back in the day. Upon, uh, upon graduation, he became a radio sports announcer, a screen test in 37, won him a contract in Hollywood. During the next two decades, he's appeared in 53 films. From his first marriage to actress Jane Wyman, he had two children, Maureen and Michael. Maureen passed away in 01. In 52, he married Nancy Davis, who was also an actress, and they had two children, Patricia and Ronald. As president of the Screen Actors Guild, Reagan became embroiled in disputes over the issue of communism in the film industry. His political views shifted from liberal to conservative. He toured the country as a television host, becoming a spokesman for con conservatism. In 1966, he was elected governor of California by a margin of a million votes. He was reelected in 70. Ronald Reagan won the Republican presidential nomination in 1980 and chose as his running mate former Texas congressman and United Nations ambassador George Bush. Voters troubled by inflation and by the year-long confinement of Americans in Iran swept the Republican ticket into office. Reagan won 489 electoral votes to 49 for President Jimmy Carter. Damn, spanked him. On January 20th, 1981, Reagan took office. Only 69 days later, he was shot by a would-be assassin, but quickly recovered and returned to duty. His grace and wit during the dangerous incident caused his popularity to soar. This man got shot. <laughs> man. I hear it's, when you get shot, it feels like it's on fire and it's absolutely horrible, but yeah, I really hope I never have to experience that. Dealing skillfully with Congress, Reagan obtained legislation to stimulate economic growth, curb inflation, increase employment, and strengthen national defense. He embarked upon a course of cutting taxes and government expenditures, refusing to deviate from it when the struggling strengthening of defense forces led to a large deficit. A renewal of national self-confidence by 84 helped Reagan and Bush win a second term with an unprecedented number of electoral votes. Their victory turned away Democratic challengers, Walter F. Mondale and Ferrano. Sorry, folks, keep rolling. 
In 86, Reagan obtained an overhaul of the income tax code, which eliminated many deductions and exempted millions of people with low incomes. At the end of his administration, the nation was enjoying its longest recorded period of peacetime prosperity without recession or depression. In foreign policy, Reagan sought to achieve peace through strength. During his two terms, he increased defense spending 35%, but sought to improve relations with the Soviet Union. In dramatic meetings with Soviet leader Mikhail Gorbachev, is that how you pronounce that? Mikhail Gorbachev? He negotiated a treaty that would eliminate intermediate-range nuclear missile, missiles. Reagan declared war against international terrorism, sending American bombers against Libya uh, after evidence came out that was involved in an attack on American soldiers in a West Berlin nightclub. By ordering naval escorts in the Persian Gulf, he maintained the free flow of oil during the Iran and Iraq war. In keeping with the Reagan doctrine, he gave support to anti-communist insur insurgencies in Central America, Asia, and Africa. Overall, the Reagan years saw a restoration of prosperity and the goal of peace through strength seemed to be within grasp. Cool. Reaganomics, working things abroad, um, just a lot of different things with Reagan I thought were really cool, and I'm probably biased because he grew up right next to where I grew up. All right. Also, we had an honorable mention of George Washington. If you guys want to learn more about him, I really like George Washington. And additionally, we had an honorable mention of JFK, 35th president of our country. You can always come back and you can rewatch this. This was a longer episode, but when it comes to history, it turns out if you like history, it's just a lot of reading. <laughs> and if so, if you enjoy reading and you like reading history, or if you like watching videos on this type of stuff, I always like to check in, especially when the holidays are fresh. It kind of just gives me a higher sense of empathy of what other people have gone through. People just Millions and millions of people have died to create the world that we have today. And I'm very grateful to be an American and to be able to call some of these people the leaders of our nation. If you feel frustrated about maybe current administration, maybe you're thinking you're not a big fan of Biden or Trump or whoever's running in the current office, just maybe I like to put a reminder for myself that there's going to be presidents that don't fit all of our wants and needs. And that's why there are things like a top five list. I think we all, and that's one of the great things about you, the U S is that unlike Russia, we can actually get a new leader and kind of keep moving. And, and maybe you don't like the one now, but continue to push for your, standing by your own values and showing up as the person you want to be. And then being really excited about the new younger talent that will be coming in. I have full faith and confidence in this country that will continue to turn things around and continue to improve them. I think this is the greatest country and nation in the world. And I'm really excited that I, I'm able to live here and call it home. So these were some of my favorite presidents. I think history is really cool. I'm actually, I got to bounce. I got a couple meetings here shortly, but you guys have an incredible, incredible day. If you learn something on one of the presidents that you like, or you want to go pick up a Pulitzer Prize book and learn more about one of them, either way, cheers to history, cheers to living the good life, and cheers to having an incredible Monday, holiday Monday. I love you all. Have a great day, and I'll catch you guys bright and early with another episode of the Talk Tanner Morning Show tomorrow, where we're gonna do a we're gonna do an extra coaching exercise together. It's gonna be fun. But cheers, friends. Have a great day. I'll catch you all. You can rewatch this on any of your social medias. Come back if you want to dive into any of the, the top five or the honorable mentions that we talked about in the front half of the video or the second half. But cheers to you all. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out, friends. I'm out of here. Have a great day.